Hello YouTubers, welcome to another great exposure. Um, blessed, a great experience. Blessed, and then today we will be completing the task which we started yesterday. I couldn't finish it yesterday because I got back very late from work and I've got a couple of things. I had a couple of things to take care of, so um, I think I'm going to try to fix it before I get out this morning. So um, we had started the um clinic priv priv privilege escalation room in triadme and then um, we were able to drag it up to i think um challenge 10 task 10. today let's see if we can finish it before my time elapses and i have to get up so uh we start the box already and we're going to i think we connect that we have our vpn thing running i'm just going to verify um by using the ip hdr command so i'm going to prep for 10 dots i think it's 10 dots 8 okay so i've got that turn zero thing happening there great so um we will ssh into the box because that's what we're required to do right so ssh um we're using the user i believe um so we've got that 10.10.132. We've got 44. Okay. Yes, we'll accept that. Then we've got the password. And we should have our initial access. That's correct. Oh, that was typed wrong. Okay, so try that again. Okay, so we've got the initial access in the box and uh, we can verify we have this ID set for us. Great, so let's quickly jump to task um, 11 and pick it up from there. Now task 11 is asking us to find all those suite, uh, such as ID, set group ID, uh, executables on the Debian VM. So we're going to dump the find we just copy that file command and dump it there. Note that um, slash user slash has been uh, exam appears in the results. Try to find the known exploit for this version. So um, finding an exploit, local police installation exploit matching this version of exam exactly should be available. Copy can be found on Debian. So which means there is a copy on the box. But we'll do some research then we'll probably grab that copy which is in the box. So let's dump this find command and see what that can do for us. Paste this in here and we'll go. Great. So that there seems to be a few, quite a few of them. And um, we're basically looking for Exim. So let's look for that. Um, User being user s bin um, user s bin <clears throat> didn't find anything like that from the results. Uh, note that uh, this doesn't seem to be in the results. Okay. I'm just going to modify that command to clean up some of those things. I don't really need those permissions. So I'm removing this and run that again. Make it easy for me to look at. Okay, there it is. All right, so we can see it there. Maybe I should just do another SSH. Then I'm going to navigate to uh, this directory. Oh no, this is in the Debian VM. Mm, okay, so I'm not using the VM. I'm not sure this is going to be found there. But let me just check. It might be in the VM. As they've specified. So I'll copy this. And I'm going to see the 
paste this there okay that's a theme all right so that's it there but uh, we can go check exploit db just to search for bricks maybe we'll grab this and then let's play for this version so i'm going to grab this just so we can showcase that in the video as well copy this and go to exploit db and just find that in exploit db so um we're just going to search for this see no no match mm. so maybe we can the other exploit database uh, is that is exim a thing is that a thing at all okay there seems to be a thing there a thing for the version which we are looking at 4.8 4.8 4. 4.3 uh, there's 4.87 4.90 4. 4.89 it doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to be a four points we'll just check that again quickly 4.8 let's see if it gives us all the 4.8 is that 4.87 which is what we're looking no, 4.84 is what we're looking for there 4.84 there seems to be there 4.843 local privilege extension okay we can just click on it um we can download it or we'll just preview it quickly um, basically we'll see what it looks like so we've got echo this cut this into roots the perm then package which is strict is one in then spawn it being SHL then I think that's basically it. Okay, so we've got it in the box. Uh, here on the box, we can cut it as well, just to view the contents. And I see it's exactly what we find in exploit DB. So it's not far fetched from what is in exploit DB. Um, basically, I think the same, except um, is there a modification? There don't seem to be a modification. Uh, it's exactly a copy of it. So great, we're going to work with this in here. So I'm going to clear the screen. Then pull back to track me. And um, are we supposed to use it? We can just execute it in here and see what happens. And just like that, we've got a, a root shell. We check ID. We see effective user ID and the group ID as well as the group. We're all roots all the way. So I think, um, all right, let's switch off the AC. Great. So I see this one works pretty fine and there's no uh, feedback from them. So we just complete this task and we've got that thing good to go. We're quickly going to move on to the next task. Next task. Next task. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So, well, I'm not sure what's happening over there, but I'm just going to jump that thing because it's, it's a bit slow in the response. I'm clicking the enter thing is not, or maybe I should just restart that browser. Okay, we're going to click complete now, and that's fine. All right, so next, quickly, we've got uh, mm -hmm. Let's see, turn it to this message. All right, good. So we've got the next task um, here. So we do it executively. A shared object injection. So here we'll find out some shared object injection. We say the slash user local being suite. So suite executable is vulnerable to shared object. We could go do some Googling to research about this, but we see they're telling us already it's vulnerable to shared object injection. And basically, we may ask what what does what it does it mean to say shared object injection? A better way to explain that is just to do some googling, so we can see. Probably talk about it a bit. So we can see um, a clear explanation here. Uh, that's the twenty seventeen. That's in pretty old bits, but not bad. We'll just read the some some stops from it and just to discourse that here. 
So Linux application ma make use of technically linked shared object library. So it's more or less the library libraries going on here. Uh, let's just call them shared library for now. Okay, make simplicity to provide application functionality without having. I think it's similar to what you find Windows uh, loading all them DLLs. Uh, once you call up an application, all the link libraries needed for the application to function perfectly. It's just going to spawn them up quickly. And then that's what this basically is as well. And so I'm not going to waste time going into the details. I can leave this uh, a link to this article in the description. So I'm going to leave that open because I'm going to leave the link to this. And also going to leave the link to, I think yesterday I had said I'll leave the link to this. As well as the GTFO um, bin stuff. So I'm going to leave these links. You can... Um, I think I was supposed to leave some other links, the PHP, the reverse shell bin, all that I'm going to leave links to in the description uh, of this video when I upload on YouTube. So look out for them. Probably you'll be able to grab those links. All right. So now they say first, execute the file and note that currently displays a progress bar before exiting. So we're going to execute that file. I'm going to exit this to the fall back to uh, initial shell. I'm going to clear the screen here as well. Then I'm going to execute um, USR local bin. Then there's suite dot so. So let's quickly execute the file. So this is calculating something. Please wait. <laughs> All right. So uh, done. So uh, can we cut the content of that file? Let's see. If we can view what's in it, okay, it's compiled. Okay, pretty nice stuff. All right, great. I'm going to clear the screen. So this is first execute the file and note that currently it displays a progress bar before exiting. So more or less like there's a link library thing happening there, the progress bar. So run, stress on the file and search the output for open access call and for no such file errors. Okay, let's just run um, the advising run states. So is that it pin on this box? We'll see. Okay, it's there already. I'll just grab this command and paste it here. So quickly um, analyzing this, we can see the access. They are here, they're telling us that we can run a trace in the file and we can start with the output for open access. You can actually see some access here, then you can see open here as well. And about three of them. So looking at that, note that the executor tries to load the user that config um left half. So uh, we can see that there are quite a bunch of them happening here as well, not just that one. So switch debug. You can check what permissions each of these are run with mostly their roots then the, i guess that's what the technique is going to be using but this is what they are pointing us towards user config this great so um if that's true and it's a pin for us here um that shared object within the home directory is actually being called but cannot be found so we see no such file or directory there's an error we got as a return back great now we're going to create the, the config directory for the libcat so file. So we use the command make that. Quickly copy this and we just paste it here. Click enter. So we have that created. It's dot config, so it's a hidden directory. I believe we know that already. Example shared object code can be found that. Okay, so there are there's an example shared object code which is here. But I think I don't have to copy. Uh, can I? It's simply spawned the bash job. Let, let's go look at it. Let's copy this. And let's cut the content of that. Oh no. Let's remove this. Um, okay, so it's just a C, some basic C code. Uh, solid void inject root. Okay, inject. Okay, set to it zero, then uh, spin up the bash thing. Okay, great. 
so we're going to compile that so we'll grab this and we'll go compile that code we'll just paste this here straight up so that should compile the code if we probably uh, maybe i just cd to the directory where that thing is into so we can be viewing it i'm going to remove this so i can go to that directory if i list the content you can see okay there is the exam there is the lead cap you can see then there's the service um, c program as well so execute the suite that so execute again and note that this time instead of progress bar so we're going to run that again clear this quickly then we'll go all the way to the top and execute this again is that what they ask us to do so this time around we didn't see that error for all this so um so we are going to stop this and then it clear the screen again sorry and go all the way back to the suite of so thing let's see if we can execute it this time around and the progress button did also oh, it's it's exploiting that link library and um, since it's running as root exploiting that link library permission to grab the and spin the root shell i think that's what this uh lib program simply is doing so suite zero then the bin bash spanning new bin bash shell as root basically so that's that exploit there and i think to check id we got effective user but in this case you see the group id was still user so effective user id is root for the group is still user here but we also belong to this root group and we maintain uh the bunch of uh all the other groups that we are in basically kind of like uh okay i see cool all right so that's for this one we've got this one done so we move on to the next one quickly we're going to exit this to fall back uh, okay there goes the load bin now so i guess that's what this is actually trying to do if i run this again i think i should grab that root shell again so it didn't it's just exploiting that link library so exit this Okay, I'm going to clear the screen. All right, so moving on to the next one. Quickly, we see um, this is suite gauge executable environment variable. So the first one was shared objects injection, right? This is environment variables. So basically, we've seen some examples um, with environment variable. This shouldn't be completely new. So let's look at this. Basically, what is this saying? You say the user local bin suite env that's environment variable to that executable can be exploited due to its inherent it's inheriting the user path environment okay so um inheriting that root stuff variable and attempting to execute programs without specifying an absolute path first execute the file and note that it seems to be trying to start the apache server so let's let's execute that file as in user local bin then is a switch uh dot env stuff or maybe i just quickly change to mine that directory no we're gonna go to um user local bin let me see what is in there so this it's got the sweet bit sets sweet bit as well as this great so we're going to execute this and see oh it's starting an apache okay great so what that program is basically doing if i cut the content can i let's see oh it's compiled okay great um, i'm not going to go through to compiling that but basically what the program is doing is it's try it's just starting the apache to server uh, um, that's what it does basically. Okay, great. 
um, run strings. So we can use strings to probably read some of the contents in that file. So maybe we'll do that. We're going to use strings. So we can see some content. Um, basically, looking at this, we can see um, there are several lines. Set feed set switch system start main. Then Apache service. This is what is going to run here, basically. But there's a line where it starts the Apache service, which is this. And so, which means it's more or less is call is calling a web server basically um and um, if we go check the apache server i think usually you find that in a, 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 a um when you look it apache 2 so i think you'll find the default uh, this is where the logs stay in but uh, uh, uh um html whatever whatever you find that in user share apache kind of like um just want to show something here okay so we can find in this as well great but on my local box i think you find that uh, okay I, I will show that because i'm actually working on something so i can't display that in my local box now okay but basically that what is trying to do start in this apache to server so um one line um, I think we've already explained this. The full part of this tutorial is in is ISP in service. So let's go, let's go find that on this box. They're telling us the full part is in a user has been service. So oh. so that's not a directory, so we'll fall back to has been and look at the contents. So this should be can we cut that service in? Okay, so that's the basic program. Alrighty. Okay. It's an executable. So can we um just showcase a few more stuff? Can we ls tap l on that file so we see there's an executable others can execute it uh, read write execute the owner is root the group is root so which means if i can execute this group this file as a normal user uh, uh, more or less i can i guess that's where the exploiting comes from the wrong permissions thing there or maybe the environment variable thing okay we'll check that as well so here they're asking us to compile so we're going to compile uh, this file i'm going to clear this screen so there is a c program and um can we cut the contents of that quickly home user uh, tools switch then service so let's see okay it's a quick one basically what it does is it's found in the bin bash shell okay great so we're going to compile that program so i'm just going to take it all the way back and put the gcc thing back and output a service then we we'll point that to mm. am i missing something Mm. Mm. Cannot open output file. Permission denied. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's look at the, let's go look that up. Um, we're trying to compile the code. Isn't that the code we're trying to compile? We're going to just go to that directory home user tools 
switch so following there what do i have okay so i've got that service doc c there can i just compile it here and see if i can do that on this directory that i'm in so i'm going to call it service then the password in the okay so that worked in here so maybe i cannot do it from the directory where i'm in uh, uh, based on the permissions i have to do that there okay so if i list it up if i list the content i can see i've got the compiled code there service so we have to go replace um or prepare in the current directory where the new service executive is located to the path variable and run it oh, okay so what we're doing is we're actually pointing to the not sure what's happening to me drop a code i guess okay so we're going to prepare in the current directory or the path or where the new service executive is located to the path variable and run the suite environment variable to gain root shell so let's see how that works basically i'm going to copy this since i'm i'm in the directory where that file is i think i can just oh man can i just run this here and i got i get a root shell uh i see that was pretty easy id i see this time around i've got roots yours id group id roots as well group is roots cool stuff okay great so that's it for this one and i see it's the the, the idea here is it's the one we've just compiled uh, that was just a a, a, a program to found a root shell it's not the original one which is the services so basically what we're doing is we're calling the one we have compiled not the original one remember we have viewed the one which is the original one here to cut that content of service again just so i can show that this is the original one here this is actually a web sub kind of like but the one which we had modified is just uh something that was found the uh, root shell for us if i cut that content again the service the c program we can see this one is just meant to span a root shell for us basically so we are setting the path to the one we had pre-compiled so we can just pin a root shell find a root shell rather than running the program service which sits there in the device the being directory so we'll complete this task we we'll move on quickly to the next task here we are using shell features so let's see what shell features are we are using here basically so we're saying um let's forward to that directory user bin oh. is this user local bin let's pull in here quickly let's see what we have so there's this compiled program already here so the environment variable two so what is this trying to do is identical to the one in the actual so let's see this one the user local bin hmm. isn't isn't it the same thing it's basically the same thing because we're in the same directory okay similar to the one so which means they're telling us that both of them are actually the suite end and the suite end two uh they are similar I see they are compiled. If I try to cut it, I guess it's just going to show me that gibberish stuff. Okay, great. Except that it uses the absolute. If I can string it, let me see. Can I string it on? Excuse me. Can I string on the first one? Here. Okay, let me string on the second one here. So basically, I think it's the path thing happening here. So we see here. So this one has got the user has been service, while this one is just directly on the service. So this one has the full path. This doesn't have the full path. So I guess they are quite similar. 
Okay, great. Verify with the strings. Uh, we just did that. Inverse version less than 4.2 what's that 048 it is possible to define shell function so it's actually shell function uh, exploit here with name that resembles the fire part then expose those functions so that they are used instead of any actual executable at that file part so we'll verify the version of bash installed on the debian vm uh, let's just verify that we use the declared screen we use the bin bash then we'll pass that version and see so what version do we have it's less than i specified here 4.2 this is 4.1.5 so we have something less than that so which means um that exploit can work okay great um create a bash function with the name so we're doing that now that executes a new bash shell using that key so permissions are preserved so we're going to grab this create a function okay we've got that function to be created in the user has been service directory okay great so next what do we have to do with that run the suite environment uh, okay to game the shell just just like that so we're going to run this our code here <laughs> and see but i'm going to exit from this root shell let me see and i'm going to just run user local bin suite environment two and that starts oh this didn't work okay um oh web server patch two already running can I run that in? Is that a thing here? Mm. Local bin. Oh, okay. That drops into a root shell instantly here. So I guess it's the shell where I run it from. Um, it's not getting that from another shell. Okay, cool. Great. So if I run an ID here, you see we root again. I'm gonna exit this. See that was pretty fast as well. We got this one done also. Then the next one we have there is um task 15. It's still the sweet gate executive robot abusing shell feature two. So what shell feature are we abusing here? This will not work on bash version. Oh great, 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 great. When in debugging mode, bash uses environment variable PS4 to display an extra prompt for debugging the statement. So we're going to run the um, user local bin suite, the second program with bash debugging enabled. So let's see if we can set bash debugging and see what we can see. Basically, we're changing the uh, uh, permissions to setting the suite bits then we're setting this program in uh, temp root bash that one we had used before so we're copying the bin bash to our temp root bash then we're changing the permissions and doing some other stuff there i'm just going to copy this quickly paste this here and run that okay it's already running did i kill it or did i kill it okay so running the root bash with p to gain a shell running root privilege so i see at this point can we try that can we just run the root bash and pass that p to it will that give us a root shell and it did give us a root shell okay so this time around uh we can see this root shell the user id is retained the group id is retained as the user but the effective user id is what changed to root so which means we still have our user id as our user but our effective user id is now root our effective group id as well is root so we can execute stuff as root since we're in root group as well but mind you it retained the user id and the group id of that particular user but it's still root shell so we can still carry out root task using a shell like this okay so we are going to clean up on ourselves we're just going to remove that modified root bash thing there 
to my temp directory. Then we're going to exit this root shell. Okay, that's the task. Then we'll move on to 16 quickly. Now, if you pay attention to all we've been doing thus far, we haven't actually brought in maybe a program uh, to use. Well, this program is already on the box, anyways. So, and most of the techniques that have been used here, it's just using pre installed uh, utility on the Linux box, more or less, exploiting path variable, exploiting permissions. Basically, that's what this is relying on. That should let you know that uh, 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 these are clean stuff. Sometimes, still stuff like this can just be overlooked, and an attacker can use the stuff like this to grab a root shell on a Linux box. Pretty, pretty cool, pretty smooth, pretty easy. I think there are some modules that will have to bring in maybe stuff like the Carl to do some kernel exploit, or maybe some other advanced stuff. I'm not sure, but let's just proceed with this. If a user, so here we're looking at password and key history file. Great, so password key history file. I think you can find it was once I saw some passwords in the history file. So yeah, I think it was once I saw some passwords on a box I was working on. If the user accidentally types a password on the command line instead of into the password prompt, very true. It may be recorded or not may, it will usually it should be recorded. View the content of all the hidden history so we can just cut the history and pass that to less to view the contents and we'll see if we find some passwords. Uh, <laughs> let's do that. Okay, great. So we're going to cut on the home. Then we're doing this. Uh, Oh my gosh, history. Then we'll pass that to less. Oh no, man. Oh, great. So we see um, there's the command that was typed here. And the password is this. The user is root. So can we use that to? So into roots. Oh man. Then just put that password thing there. And just like that, we've got a root shell. Check an ID. Um, we're roots, group roots, and um, group uh, git as well is roots. Group ID is roots. So we've got a root shell for ourselves. And that was pretty fast. I think I've used, I've done this once in a box. I just got on the client's environment and I think when I got the shell, uh, uh, um, I just ran something like this and instantly I was able to grab kind of like uh, some stuff stored in the history file and found the password, which was pretty cool to use. Now you could do this on any, um, you know, um, so I'm going to end this. My keyboard can just work for me. Let me clear the screen. I want to just showcase something. So I'm going to just pin up a new shell and bring it in here. I could as well run that command here. Oh, sorry. And just so I can show you what it looked like. This is my own box. So, but I'm sure there's nothing like a password there anyways. It should show maybe some of the commands that are stored in my history. So this should give you an idea of what I've been doing more or less uh, on my box, kind of like, um, okay. I'm showing you what I've been doing thus far on my box. Yeah, basically, but I'm sure there's no password stuff there. <laughs> All right. So I'm doing some SMB stuff on the job I was working on. And um, some Python stuff, some the client stuff as well. Yeah, bas basically, yeah. Just to give you an idea of uh, what is in my history file. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there anyways i'm going to push that away quickly and um, we get back to our task and just clear a few things 
in the background. Sorry, I was going to clear if you can see the background. Okay. Oh no, I mute. Sorry, I'm just trying to clear if you can see the background. I was working on something before I jumped into the recording. And, uh, I see there's a prompt that I need to attend to. Hmm. Okay, well, good to go. All right, back to this. So we saw that, and that worked pretty fine for us. Um, I think they want us to grab something. What's the full name of MySQL command? So let's run that again and grab that command. So that was there. And dump it back at them so we can get a green light thing going on for us. And um, we're good. And part 17. Here we're dealing with password and keys again, but config file. So we're more or less checking um, um, com config config file opened, often contain password. They're yeah, very true in plain text. Yeah, most times. List the content of the user home. So let's go check. Um, we're going to exit from this. And we're just going to list the content of the user home and um, directory. So we see there's a tool, myvpn.ovpn. Hmm. Can we cut that? <laughs> uh, can we just, I'm going to go back to the command and cut. Just being lazy and see what is not helping me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so cut the content of. myvpn.ovpn. Can we see a password there? Hot user pass hot the text mm, so this points us to something but let's look around again uh, remote IP um, okay the file contain a reference to another location obviously yes which is this we can grab this and go cut the content of this And see, we've got the root and password there as well. So we can sue, I'm gonna exit this. It's basically the same username and password, but just to show, we can sue into root and use that password. It's the same thing. So we've got another root shell. Check an ID. And here we've got everything root. So we'll clear this. All right, so we're gonna exit this and clear our screen. We'll clear our screen here. Is there anything they want us to put in here? What file did you find in the user root credential? Okay, we're going to paste this here and get the green thing going for us. Then we'll clear this. Then we'll move on to 18. 18 is about uh, SSH keys. And uh, usually we'll find that in the .ssh, which is a hidden directory. So it should be in the home. So let's see. Sometimes users make backup of important files but fail to secure them with the correct permissions. Look for hidden files and directory in the root system. So let's do ls. I think I've showcased the ls stack al or la command on the root directory. We're going to see all the hidden files. Okay, great. So if we look around, we can find the dot ssh thing happening there. So this is actually a hidden directory, and um, um, we can can we can we change into it? It's a directory actually. We can see the D in front of it there. It's directory. Okay, can we can we change into it? Is that a thing? 
All right, let's just work with them. Uh, note that this is a world readable. The permissions, uh, look at it. Read that execute, read, execute. So it's word readable, not word writable. So which means everybody can read. All right, so can we, can we just change into that directory thing? Uh, can we just go to, and um, can we cd to SSH and see what is in there? So can we cut that? Okay, so this is the root key. So we can we can change the permissions on the root key to something that should be readable 600. 600 is read write for the user, then nobody else has got permission. I think usually the, the, the keys usually love permissions like that. So we're just going to do that and use that SSH. So I may need to exit out of this because I'm going to use these keys to SSH. So oh no, I don't have to because I'll do that here, right? Okay, great. Um I'll clear the screen. Let's view the permissions on that key actually. So currently um, is the owner read write, others read. So let's trip off those read from the other. We're gonna use the ch mode, no ch own. No, it's already root ch mode. And if I can type correctly, okay, put that 600 there. Okay, the 600 is actually read write for the user. Then every other person, no permissions. So we pass that, pass that file name there. Hmm. So I think I, I shouldn't be doing that from where I am. Probably I should be doing it from the roots. <laughs> from that. Okay, so I'm going to change back to where am I? Okay. So can I can I copy that file to my my own uh, uh box? Can I is that a thing? Uh, can I use uh, 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 is there Python here? I think I checked before there's no Python. Yeah. Okay, so what can I use to copy? Can I use SCP or is there anything? I want to copy this file to my own box. Mm. What what option did they give us? Copy the key file or to, it's easier to just view the content of the file. Ah, okay. Uh, but I, is that duplicate? There's duplicate. Can I use duplicate to, to send? Is there call? There is no call. Is there SCP? Oh, there's SCP, so I can I can use SCP anyways. Uh, I think I haven't showcased that before. So maybe the good way to, to showcase it, how S you can use SCP to uh, um, send files without just copying and pasting. What they are recommending for us to do is just copy and paste it. So maybe we'll see how that works. But I think I need to get some water. I'm not sure if I picked up a cold or something. Uh, hope it's not here. I need to get probably get some tea. Excuse me, please. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> okay, so. I'm sorry, I'm trying to do, yeah, it's a problem with my, okay, so I think we're going to use SCP, uh, 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 I still have some time up my sleeve to do this stuff, so SCP, uh, I'm not sure what the command looks like, but we're going to try and view the command based on what the help menu is giving us here, let's see if we can view the command, so can we, can we do SCP, Got a thing? Then uh, what options are we going to pass here? Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Init, SSH option, port, program, Z host. 
So I think I need to uh, 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 stage on my own box, receiving box. So from the remote, from the remote to my local box, I'm trying to send a file from the remote to my local box. So I think we can do SCP tag out username. I think I know the username and the password. Uh, uh, hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that uh, username is user, I believe. Then the um, IP, I know the IP. Uh, it's 10.10.132.40. Then uh, I see we can pack the file name when the directory where the file is. So I'm sending this file to um, this roots.key and I'm sending this to my let me see um, home cyber tricks then download then Linux I think I've got a uh, CD Linux project so Linux and UX Priv EXC. Is that a thing? Mm, what's that password again? Oh, no such file or directory. Are you serious? Isn't that file in there? <laughs> okay, did it, did, it, did it work? I just checked. Did it work? That file is actually in there. So why why didn't it work? Hmm, I'm not sure why. Uh, because uh, for copying from the remote host to local host, we are in the remote host. So from the remote host, we're executing the command SCP. Do I need to pass the full directory? Maybe we'll see. Hmm. Okay, let me see. Can I copy that file to a different directory? Bye. Um, can I copy root key to maybe home user? Okay, can I go to home user? And let's and can I run that SCP command here? We'll see if it's gonna give me a thing. Um, I'm copying the can I just cd to home user? Oh, hey, cd. Now it was a race of my time. I need to finish this thing before my time catches up with me. So can I just use the SCP command here and send this? If it doesn't work, I'm just going to open the file and copy the file. Is that a thing? Oh, no such file in directory. Okay, I think I'm making a mistake. I'm making a mistake. I'm doing it the reverse way. So what I should be doing is uh, that's my bias. Sorry. <coughs> So I should be on my box. I should be doing SCP. And I'm doing user at 10.10.132.40. Then I'm copying the file. Um, that directory is uh, home. 
user, then this roots t. Copy in this virus. I can just copy it to my to this place I'm in currently. Is that a thing? Okay, that works. Fine. Okay, great. So I've got the root key there. So um, let me check LS stack here on that root key file. So I'm going to ch mod. Um, I'm going to put the 600 on root key file. Change the permissions. Then ssh that I pass the key root key authenticate as roots then 10 the 10 the 132.40 and that should give me a root shell great just like that id i've got a root shell so that was it i think that's what they wanted to do here i guess i was making i was making a mistake with the command there but it's got it figured out later let's try to finish up i'm i'm actually late but let's try to finish up file created in Created via NFS, inherits remotes. This might take a while, NFS stuff. Let's see, let's look at that quickly. Check the NFS share configuration on Debian VM. I'm going to do this pretty fast. So I'm going to cut the content of uh, uh, Etsy, etc. Auto completes exports. Let's see. So we've got this uh, SS control list file. Okay. Some example. So basically, what we have is slash temp. Okay, the squash, the tree. Thing happening there. Okay, great. So, can we, for your Kali box, switch to your roots user if you are not already using roots? Okay. So, there is this temp being shared. I'm going to exit this quickly. And um, I'm a root user. So, if I do my, my Kali box, can I make in this? Can I make that? I can make the uh, temp. I think I'm going to be mounting NFS. Then I can use the mount command. I'm just going to copy that command quickly. Paste this. I'm going to change that IP to the IP of the server 10.10.132. 10, dot 40 okay see if i can mount that remotely still isn't okay i think that worked fine uh, we're able to mount that uh temp nfs great so um still using okay can we can we just ls tap l on temp can you see that NFS thing there? Okay, so it's there. Great. We've got it mounted. It's roots. So cool. I'm gonna clear the screen. Then let's see. Still using Kali Roots user. Generate the payload is never said venom. So I'm gonna grab this and just paste this here and change a few bit of details. Um Okay, we did we're passing it straight to the nfs we call it shallow f l file so it's going to go straight and put itself in there i think all seems fine it's basically what it's doing the payload is just trying to be in bash shell uh, um, as roots then we're going to put that in the shed and probably access it then it should give us a root shell i think i've used a technique like this in one of my videos on youtube so that worked fine we've got the payload created i can just see the temp nfs let's look at that stuff can i list the content so i see there's the backup tab z there then there's the shell l so we can change the permissions i'm just going to grab this command i can just do it here use the ch mode i'm going to pass the plus s executable in s to keep it then on that shell why is the scene so slow now? Uh, so that should be fine. Just take a bit thin going on. So if we go back in here and we fold the temp, we can look at that content. We can just 
call that cell.f which is grab root cell and just like that id you can see uh user id is still us but our effective user id have changed to root so this is on the effective user id as root you can execute root task basically what is the name of the option that disables root question so i see it's somewhere there is it a pin name of the option that disables root question in security question no roots squash I'm not sure exactly what that command is so please check mm, secure is it bit no so far. I'm not sure I'm just gonna try that out I'm not sure what exactly they want obviously not that one is it a no root squash yeah okay so okay disable root squash I think it's no root squash should be this one yeah so then the kernel exploit uh, I'm not sure what we're doing this I think I have a video on YouTube for Jericho and basically that's what this wants us to do but let's see if we can just do it I still have some few minutes I'm gonna exit out of this shell if the executable is already on the box I can quickly do that so run um link exploit suggested to to identify potential exploits in the current system so can we grab that exploit suggester i'm just going to paste this in and run that quickly um we saw quite a bunch of them or quite a bunch of them actually so i think we'll be using dirty cow basically um dirty cow should be on the box so we just I got a video I think that used Dedicow. So I'm just gonna skip this process and paste this in here. Oh no, did I do clear the screen? Paste this in here. I don't know if that's that bad. Wait for it to run. I think I made a mistake in the command. I'm gonna clean it up again and paste it this time around correctly. Uh, great. Wait for it to compile. If it compiles, we can uh, we can run the password to um, use a bin password to clean the shell. It takes it's taking time. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Just gonna copy that command. Clear this. Go back to time. Yeah, this is taking time. Hurry, <laughs> I need to go. <laughs> All right. So, but there's nothing to do here. So I'm gonna complete the task. And while that is doing its job. Oh man, yeah, okay, so it's done finally. I'm gonna paste this and grab the root shell ID. You see, um, this time around, we got roots group roots user and the group ID as well as roots. So, quickly, I'm gonna clear this screen. Oh, variable not set. Oh, so this is not a stable shell then. Okay, great. Or well, can you grab a stable shell using the Python uh, PTY? thing uh, demo that a couple of times we're just going to clear 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 uh tracks or restore back to a good states so we don't get some problems then we exit the switch show that's for that then the next and the last task here i don't think there's anything they want us to do here just pointing us to some other potential scripts or uh, tools or techniques that can help and that's in the home. Can I just copy that to my local box? And cd to home user tools. Oh man, home. I need to buy a new keyboard. User tools. 
and just see. So there are a bunch of stuffs there. Can I see the two kennel exploits? I'm sure there's a bunch of them there. Yeah, the Twitter cow limits express chaser. I can just use SCP to move this to my local box. And there are some other ones. Maybe I just go back. Can I just copy the directory completely? Can I can I do that? I'm just gonna copy that directory completely. Can allow me. Uh, can SCP copy directory? SCP can copy directory, right? I think you can use it, that arrow switch. Copy directory. So let me see where am I? I'm gonna go to um my let's see. Oh no, go to my ops directory. So I'm going to um SCP that arrow. So we know we are, are gonna be using the user. I can just use the root. Oh, I find user at um, the IP 10.10.132.40. Then I'm going to copy the directory. Uh, I think that directory, let me see. It's not working directory. It's a uh, home. Oh man. Home user and tools. I'm copying the complete directory and I'm going to paste, drop it in my whole ops directory. Let's see. I have to move a password. Okay, can that copy it for me? Okay, so it's copying it for me. I'm just copying the direct, or the, everything in the directory, copying everything there to my local box. Okay, so I think we're done with the task. We can complete this. And we've got that congratulations stuff happening for us. Cool. Um, basically, uh, as a summary, we can see that uh, we didn't just rely on running automated scripts, rather we were using the technique around some of the default tools and scripts in Linux to, to accelerate privilege. That's very important. Most of the part of what we did were around wrong permissions, as well as variables that are not pr properly set. So the, the caveat here is you must understand that to secure the system, you want to be sure you regularly uh, have a way to look at permissions, set of files and executables, and as well as even directories. You want to make sure you, you look at uh, uh, um, variables that are set as well to prevent, uh, um, to prevent escalation of privilege. Uh, if an attacker already is getting a foothold, at least make it difficult for them to uh, uh, um, move around, get that higher privilege, and commit more havoc in your environments. Thanks for sticking around with me. And I'm going to call this a shot here. It's been a nice time with you. And have a good day. Uh, thanks.